This production is brought to you by the University of Edinburgh. This session is all about the solutions to exercise two, which was on variables and arrays. So let's have a look at question one. We're told to create the following matrices. So A is our row vector. And then we use spaces to denote the elements in the row vector. B is a matrix. And we use a semicolon to denote the different rows in the matrix. And lastly, C is our column vector. And you'll see using the semicolon to denote the separate rows in the column vector. So the first part of question one, part A, was to assign to the variable x1 the value of the second column of matrix A. So we want to access matrix A, obviously. Um, we use round brackets when we're trying to access elements within vectors and matrices. And we know that A is a vector with one row and four columns. So we want to access the first row, there is only one of them, comma, and we want to access the second column. And we want to assign that to the variable x1. And we see that that assigns the value of 17 to x1. In a similar fashion, we want to assign to the variable x2 the third column of matrix B. Now, this time, we want to assign all the rows, which is denoted by the colon, and the third column. And x3 should be the third row of matrix B. So this time we want the third row and all the columns. And lastly, part D, x4, should be the first three values of matrix A. So that's the first row. And to get the first three values, we want to take the first to the third value. And as the second, third and fourth rows of this variable x4, we should have the matrix B. So you'll see I've enclosed this expression in square brackets to denote that it's a matrix. The first row of my matrix is the first three elements of A. And the remaining rows of my matrix, X4, are the matrix B. Now we'll just use the CLC command before we begin question 2 to clear up our command window. And we're also going to use the clear all command, which clears all the variables that we've just created from the workspace. So you'll see before I execute the command, the list of variables in the workspace and after I execute the command, those are cleared. It's always a good idea to do that because it saves you getting confused about what's assigned to what variable. We have a matrix and we're asked which command will produce the following matrix. You can see that the first row of matrix B contains the elements 3 and 2. So it looks like they come from the first row of A and the second and third columns. In the second row of B, we've got the elements two and one, and they come from the second row of A, and that's the first two columns. So we'll create our new matrix B, and it's going to consist of the first row and the second and third columns of A in the first row of B. And then in the second row of B, we want the second row of A and the first and the second columns. And you can see that returns the matrix that we're asked for. 
So question three, we have to create the following matrices. So now that we've created these matrices, we have to try performing some operations. The first of these is A plus B. And that's just simply a case of adding element by element the elements in A to the elements in B. So this is a matrix multiplication of A times B. And just to give you an example as to how we calculate the element in the first row and the first column of our answer, that's arrived at by multiplying the elements in the first row of A by the first column of B and adding them up. So that's 1 times 1 plus 2 times 1 plus 3 times 1. And that gives us 6. And we repeat that for all the elements in our answer to arrive at the matrix multiplication of A times B. And we can only perform the matrix multiplication of these two matrices if the number of columns in matrix A equals the number of rows in matrix B. And in this case it does, so there exists a matrix multiplication of A times B. So the next thing we're asked to try is to add A to C. And we get an error message. And we can't do that because A and C are matrices of different dimensions. So the next thing to try is B times A. And again, that's a matrix multiplication. And you'll see that that's different from A times B. And that's because different elements are being multiplied and added together. And you can work out for yourself how each of these elements have been calculated. So we can try and do B minus A. And that's possible because B and A have the same dimensions. So each element is just being subtracted from, from the corresponding element in the other matrix. We can try and do the matrix multiplication of A times C. And that's allowed. And that's because the number of columns in A, 3, equals the number of rows in C, which is also 3. So we can perform that matrix multiplication. We can try C minus B, which results in an error. And again, the reason for that is that the dimensions of C and B are different. And the last thing we want to try is C times A. Again, a matrix multiplication. And we can't do that. And the reason we can't do that is that there are two columns in C, but there are three rows in A. And as I said, you can only do the matrix multiplication where the number of columns in the first matrix equals the number of rows in the second matrix. So question 3, part B, what's the difference between A times B and A dot times B? Well, this is a very important difference. A times B is the matrix multiplication. A dot times B is the element by element multiplication. And you can just try that out. Again, if we do A times B, you can see the result of the matrix multiplication. If we do A dot times B, and you can see it's a completely different matrix because it's multiplying element by element A with B. So question four is all about solving systems of linear equations. And whenever you see that in MATLAB, you know that you're probably going to have to use the left division operator to solve these systems of linear equations. So you can see in four part A, that this system of linear equations is of the form AX equals B. And the first thing we're going to do is enter the matrices and column vector A and B. So A is the matrix with the coefficients in it. So from the first equation, minus 2 and 1 in the first row, then 1 and 1 in the second row. B is our column vector of the right hand side, which is 3 and 10. And now to solve this system, we would do x equals a left divide b. So the two elements that are returned in the column vector x are the answers to x and y.
in this equation. And we could do a very quick check to make sure that these answers satisfy our equation. We could define a matrix C that equals A times X. And you can see that returns the elements 3 and 10, which are the answers to our two equations. So parts B and C of question 4 are just done in the same fashion. And before we do them, we'll just clear up the workspace and the command window. And our solution x is a left divide b. And again, you can see there are three elements in x corresponding to x, y, and z in our equations. So we'll just clear up again before we start part C. Now you'll notice the second equation in part C does not have any x3, so we just enter that coefficient as 0. Similarly, the third equation has no x2, so that gets a coefficient of 0. And the fourth equation has no x1, so again, that gets a coefficient of 0. And you can see that our solution x contains four elements corresponding to x1, x2, x3, and x4 in our equations. This production is Copyright, the University of Edinburgh.